Ever wondered how you can predict a car's speed just by looking at it? The secret lies in its design. Take a moment to observe its sleek lines and aerodynamic curves. These aren't just for show. They're strategic choices made by automakers to slice through the air with minimal resistance, maximizing speed. But here's the catch. While a stylish exterior might hint at speed, it's not the only factor in the race. Without ample engine power to match its looks, even the sleekest car can fall short on the speedometer. So today, let's talk about seven cars that seem speedy but are actually slow. The Porsche 912. Even a kid who can't tell a wrench from a wrench would point at a Porsche and go, that's a 911. That's how iconic this car is. It's like the rock star of cars. Everyone knows it, everyone loves it. Not only is it the most famous car ever, but it's also the yardstick against which all other speedsters are measured. Now, don't get me wrong. The earliest 911s weren't exactly speed demons. With a measly 130 horsepower and zero to 100 kilometers per hour in eight seconds, they were slower than molasses in January. But it's something, right? Especially when you compare it to its forgotten masterpiece, the 912. The 912 was like the 911's awkward little brother, cheaper, less powerful, and often overlooked. It's like they took the engine from the old school 356, stuffed it into a 911 body, and called it a day. Not the brightest idea, considering it had a mere 90 horsepower. You'd probably get more oomph from a hamster on a wheel. But here's the kicker. Despite its lackluster performance, the 912 outsold its faster sibling two to one. So why is it so forgotten? Well, it's like that B-list actor who never quite makes it big, always in the shadow of the real star, the Bricklin SV1. All right, just listen to this. Before Marty McFly was zipping through time in a DeLorean, there was another car trying to steal the spotlight, but it's like it vanished into thin air faster than you can say flux capacitor. Meet the Bricklin SV1, the forgotten hero of the car world. Now, this car had some big dreams, let me tell you. It had doors that went whoosh, like something out of a sci-fi movie, a body made from materials that made people scratch their heads, and a style that screamed, look at me, I'm from the future. But let's be real, it was like putting lipstick on a pig. Back in the 70s, safety was the name of the game. People were dropping like flies in other cars, and the SV1 was supposed to be the knight in shining armor. But let's say it wasn't exactly a smooth ride. However, the SV1 tried to be the hero with its colorful exterior and squishy bumpers. They even threw in a roll cage like a hamster ball for humans. But under the hood, it was a different story. The engine was supposed to roar like a lion, but it purred like a kitten. And don't even get me started on the gearbox. It shifted slower than a sloth on a Sunday stroll. So you wanna know how fast this beast could go? Well, it took nearly an eternity to hit 100 kilometers per hour and the top speed was about as impressive as a tortoise racing a snail. We're talking 170 kilometers per hour if you were lucky. But if there's one thing this car was good at, it was disappearing from the production line fast. Quality issues? No, it just wanted to retire early and avoid the embarrassment. Smart move. The Fisker Karma. The mastermind behind this beauty is Henry Fisker. And let me tell you, the resemblance is surprising, with curves that could make a Kardashian jealous and a roof so low you'd need a shovel to get in. Now, let's talk about karma in detail. A car with a price tag that could make a billionaire blush, but it packed a two-liter, four-cylinder engine. Yeah, talk about bringing a water gun to a flamethrower fight. It's like having a racehorse that's only good for pulling a carriage. But the Karma had a secret weapon, dual electric motors. Yet, despite boasting 400 horsepower under the hood, it was slower than a tortoise with a limp. Picture a race between a snail and a sloth. That's about the speed we're talking about here. Before you could say pit stop, the Fisker company hit the brakes hard. But the Karma lives on, now with a fresh look and some serious upgrades under Chinese ownership, like a phoenix rising from the ashes. Who said lightning doesn't strike twice? The Opel GT 1100. When we talk about the third gen Corvette, Opel's designers really hit the nail on the head with this one. 
Yep, intentional copycatting, like when you spot a knockoff Land Rover next to the real McCoy. But here's the kicker. Opel is owned by General Motors, so it's like they're copying themselves. Why, you ask? Well, the stunning C3 Corvette never made it to Europe, so GM figured this was the next best thing. But let's be real, comparing the C3 to this wannabe is like pitting a racehorse against a donkey. While the C3 was flexing with big V8s, this thing came out with a puny 1.1 liter inline four. Much of its guts were borrowed from the Cadet B. Remember Richard Hammond's Oliver from the Top Gear Botswana special? Well, the GT is like Oliver, but in car form. The Z-Vet may be small and nimble, but looking like a Corvette and moving like a tortoise? That's a crime against car enthusiasts everywhere. Doing zero to 60 in 15 seconds while looking like you could do it in less than six? That's like putting a snail in a race car suit and expecting it to win the Indy 500. No dice, Opal. The Toyota Celica GT. Okay, so get ready for a new journey because we're taking a trip down memory lane to 97. Back in 1997, Toyota introduced the Prius, all about saving gas. But when it came to their sports cars, things got a bit wonky. The Supra disappeared, the MR2 got dolled up like a prom queen, and the Celica? Well, it went from being a champ to just another car. The Celica's ad didn't talk about speed, which is like not mentioning the main ingredient in a recipe. The one zid four-cylinder engine prioritized fuel economy over horsepower, turning the Celica into a contender for the Slow Poke of the Year award. With an engine more focused on sipping gas than speed, it moves slower than a turtle in molasses. While saving fuel is commendable, it shouldn't come at the expense of performance. After all, nobody dreams of being overtaken by a mommy mobile on the highway. Let's hope Toyota revs up their sports car game with a bit more gusto next time. The Honda S660 Mugen. When seeking to enhance the performance of your Honda beyond the capabilities of the Type R variant, turning to Mugen is a natural choice. Mugen, although not officially an in-house division of Honda, is renowned for its expertise in tuning and racing modifications. The term Mugen itself, derived from Japanese, translates to without limits, a notion that takes on an ironic twist when affixed to the diminutive Honda S660. The Honda S660 is symbolic of Japan's distinctive K-car classification, designed to adhere to strict criteria aimed at minimizing taxes, these criteria dictate that the vehicle must not exceed 660 cc in engine displacement, produce no more than 65 horsepower, and maintain compact dimensions akin to a small box. Even though Mugen faced some limits, they still decided to upgrade the S660. They gave it a new look and made it more aerodynamic, but they didn't boost its engine power. They added things like wings, body kits, a cool exhaust system, and bigger wheels. But even with these changes, the S6660 speed stayed the same. It still takes a leisurely 12 seconds to accelerate from zero to 100 kilometers per hour, and its top speed is just 140 kilometers per hour. Yet, despite its lack of blistering performance, the Mugen S6060 exudes a unique appeal, combining a spirited aesthetic with the inherent charm of a K-car. Its endearing effort to emulate high-performance aesthetics within the constraints of its class renders it a captivating proposition for enthusiasts seeking a blend of style and whimsy in their automotive pursuits. The Camaro Iron Duke. We're diving into the wild world of the sixth-gen Camaro and its notorious four-cylinder adventure. When GM dropped the bombshell that they were cramming a four-banger into this muscle car icon, the fans lost their minds. It was a deja vu from the 80s when they pulled the same stunt with the third-gen Camaro. The memories of the Camaro Iron Duke, the slowpoke of the muscle car realm. Now, let's talk about performance, or lack thereof. This car took a whopping 20 seconds to hit 100 kilometers per hour. That's enough time to make a cup of coffee, sip it leisurely, and still beat the car to the finish line. Blame it on the Iron Duke engine. Sounds tough, right? But it's wrong. With a feeble 88 horsepower, this 2.5-liter four-cylinder was more interested in sipping gas than burning rubber. And to add insult to injury, it was shackled to a prehistoric three-speed auto transmission. Talk about a mismatch made in car heaven. Who at GM thought people would be cool with a sluggish Camaro just because it looked sleek? Newsflash, speed matters. 
By the time they scrapped the iron turd option, only 15% of buyers were raising their hands, while the rest were racing to the V8 section. And let's wait to get started on how those V8s weren't exactly setting the track on fire too. Which car did we miss on our list? Drop your answer in the comments below. And if you're hungry for more content like this, hit that subscribe button. We've got plenty more where that came from. So join us for the ride.